And the second game we have is a game by King Hunter. And King Hunter, as some of you know, was already featured in the last two games, the last two live streams. So let's check out this game. King Hunter with the white piece against Pass Pawn. All right, and we see the King's Indian opening. So far, so good. This is one of the main lines discussed in many, many games. So I'm not commenting too much. The first comment I'm going to make will be right here. Here the main move is rook c1 and then there's a whole lot more to this variation. And here, King Hunter, you played c takes d6. But what I learned in general is that unless there's a reason to alleviate the pressure, alleviate the tension, you don't do it. So you're taking on d6. But there's no immediate reason. And why should you keep the tension? Well, if you keep the tension, you have more options. It just gives you more options. Maybe in some case you can play c6. That is a possible move sometimes. So by keeping the tension, you just have you keep more flexibility. So just a minor thing, but I want to point it out. Takes takes, knight b5, provoking a6 and then going back, which is a usual technique to have this b6 square to enter and you know you're playing a great game here I don't really have to count much here you are just not allowing any attack by your opponent and if you are able in the king's Indian to exchange the light squared bishop of black then for white it's a position win almost already right? that is the most important minor piece for black in the position and here white has succeeded to do so and black has no attack going on whatsoever so white is doing absolutely fantastic so this is all going great now occupying the c-file and we'll go through this pretty quickly until we reach the critical moments of the game. Now g4, king f2, knight e7 and here the first step in the wrong direction I would say going rook c7. Just put the rook on b8. Put the rook as active as possible. Now the pawn on b7 is hanging, so knight g6, let's say. And now just knight b4, and what can black do? Black can't do anything. The rook is stuck to defending the pawn. Black is lacking space, and white can just improve his position. And if black tries anything with h4, you just play h3, nothing is going to happen, absolutely nothing. And then you just improve your position. You can play a4, a5, you can do whatever you want, but just as an idea, how to win this you can go knight c6 and if black takes then this pawn will queen or rook the black rook has to sacrifice itself for it and if black doesn't take the knight then the knight will come to d8 white will pay, pick up the pawn i mean there are many ways for white to play because black is just completely helpless completely paralyzed and can't create any counterplay so you go rook c7 now knight g6 and here this is really a big mistake now you exchange the rooks and why is that a mistake well you're exchanging a very good rook an active rook against his passive poor rook on f7 right the rook on f7 wasn't doing anything just defending not taking any active role and you're exchanging your very nice rook on c7 against that poor rook so always ask yourself is an exchange a good exchange for me what am I actually trading? Is my piece better than his piece or vice versa? So with exchanges, that's just a really quick question. And in that case, if you ask yourself that, then it's very simple. My rook is occupying the c file. My rook is causing trouble. I can attack the pawn b7 and then you won't exchange that rook, right? All right, rook takes, king takes. Now, a lot of your advantage is gone, actually, because well, you still have a space advantage, but it's not that easy to win now anymore uh, without uh, the beautiful active rook. Now knight c1, heading to a5, h4. But here, check what your opponent is doing for a moment, okay? Uh, you played knight b3 now, and you're just ignoring what your opponent is doing. 
Sometimes you can do it here, though it would have been good to just realize, okay, my opponent wants to go g3 next. Do I want to allow this? Hmm, I could just go h3 and nothing will happen here. I'll just stop any counterplay right away. Of course, black could take on h3 and move his knight to g3, but then what? Nothing's going to happen there. Knight can stand on g3 and so what? Knight b3, knight a5, you go after the pawn. And if g3 check, on the other hand, you play king e1 and counterplay is over for black on the king side. The only possible counterplay ever black could create is by going knight h7 and knight g5. The threat of taking on g h3 in some positions doesn't even work here because the, g the bishop is covering g1. But if you really want to be safe, you could play bishop f1 and also nothing's happening. The, the knights are just looking super stupid. So some prophylactic thinking, just killing counterplay of black on the king side by playing h3. Because after knight b3 now, g3 check. And now you take on g3 and maybe, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe you only thought about that black will also take back with the h pawn. Then indeed, it's all good. Once again, black really doesn't have any counterplay. But he takes back with the f pawn. Suddenly this knight, which was so terrible on g6, not having any perspective, is coming into a game. So what you want to do here is go back king g1 and not allow this knight coming to f4, which is a great, great square for a knight. So I'm not sure what you missed there. Maybe just this f takes g3, which is unusual because black is not taking towards the center, what is, which is the rule we learn as we grow up, that you always should take towards the center, and black is not doing that here. But it makes perfect sense for him because it, he's getting the square on f4, and suddenly you're not having any advantage anymore. Knight d7. Bishop e3, knight f4, and now again, you need to be aware of what your opponent is up to. You play knight a5, that's possible, but h3 I would be a little concerned of, because black is winning a piece here. You can take on f4, because this pawn is queening, and after g takes, black goes g2, and now can take on e2 or play g1 queen. I oh, know can can take on e2 because then you can take back, but can play g1 queen, king takes and knight takes e2, and you have lost a piece. However, since this one's also hand, you already have two pawns. Probably it's still okay. But why allow why allow this in the first place when you could play something else here, like move to bishop for example, bishop d1. Or in the worst case, excuse me, um, take on f4. But that's not really what you want to do here, to be honest. So just bishop d1. And now any of this stuff is not happening. So look out for what your opponent wants to do next. Knight a5, b6. And here now you really do need to take on f4, actually. Because of the knight c6, this h3 variation is just clearly better for black. So here you need to take on f4 and then move something like knight c6 and that should be a draw. Because now after knight c6, now the same line is just uh, better for black this time because uh, you're not winning the b7 pawn and you will be fighting for a draw here and will be a tough, tough fight. So again, like I said, look out for your opponent's ideas. I think you just ignored the king side way too much. First allowing him to get his g3 in, then allowing him to get a knight to f4, then allowing him to go h3. But fortunately for you, black missed it. Play knight c5. And now you took on c5. That's a good move, but it was a better one. And that's another of my favorite sayings. If you see a better move, look. If you see a good move, look for a better one by Manuel Lasker, the second world champion. And yes, bishop takes c5 is winning a pawn. But what if we can win the pawn better by playing b4 and not giving up our bishop on e3? And that's what you can do with b4 after the knight moves. You can just take on a6. And now this h this h3 move doesn't work as well because in this line. 
in the end the knight on c5 is also attacked so you win this knight and you win the pawn piece back and you'll be up at least one pawn so another good rule to apply always check for alternatives and again this is a kind of move right attacking an opponent's piece before so he has to react to it bishop takes pawn takes okay this is a crucial mistake now because now it just turns out that a pawn your a pawn is going to be unstoppable so i'm guessing a3 was a mouse slip or i'm not sure what happened here uh, but I'm guessing it was a mouse slip. Next move, the pawn goes to a4. And black is not in time to create counterplay. And the pawn will just queen, so your pawn resigned right here. All right, so what's the takeaway? The first half of the game you played excellent. You just crushed your opponent positionally, entered an end game where you're just positionally winning with an active rook. But from there on, you made some wrong decisions. First, you exchanged the active rook. So we talked about that. And then you didn't pay enough attention to your opponent's plans. I think this is the biggest takeaway of this game. You didn't look at the king side really. Just look at your own at, your, at the queen, queen side, what you can do, how you can create threats, but didn't really pay attention to what's going on over there on the king side. So this is something I would definitely recommend you to look into. Prophylactic thinking. Check what my opponent wants to do next. Just ask yourself the question. If it is my opponent's move right now, what would he play? And if you just periodically ask yourself that during the game, I think it can already make a big difference. All right. Still, thanks for obviously sending in the game and supporting me. I appreciate it. And I hope this analysis was helpful.